world champion of public speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mohamed Katani. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Usually, every time I do a workshop like this, the first thing I do is I take a picture with my audience. Do you guys mind? <laughs> May I? All right, everybody smile, please. Anybody who's, who does not smile will... Okay, I'm gonna get this shot uh, this side first. Yeah, great, good. And then. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, any speech that you give, whether it's a speech in front of a first master club or a toast or a presentation or a work or like whatever, think of it as a cake. What do you need to make a good cake? Good ingredients. You need good ingredients. <laughs> oh, so chocolates, yeah. So yes, you need chocolates, flour, eggs, and so on. The ingredients of any good speech, which is something that we always learn in first masters, I'm not going to bore you with it, is the following. It has to have a good structure. Clear message, your choice of words, body language, voice, information, conviction, and inspiration. And this we learn in Toastmasters whenever we join as a new member. We do speech number one, two, three, four, and speech number ten. And these are the stuff in these speeches. I'm not going to bore you with it. You already know the stuff. But I'm going to dig deep in each one of them on some like, hidden things that you could learn from. So, structure, again, introduction, body, and conclusion. The body has three points, and there is a very smooth transition between each one of these points. In the introduction, you need something called a hook. The rule says this, any speech that you give, you only have five seconds at the beginning. And if you didn't hook your audience from the first five seconds, no matter how good the speech is, they would never add the buttons into it. So at the beginning, you need something unusual, something that's never been done before. And act, sing, scream, just tell a story. A lot of people start their speeches like this. By a show of hands, how many of you have done something? And yes, we've heard that so many times to the point that uh, it just become bored. You don't listen to what's coming up next. Think of your speech as follows. There's the time of your speech, and there's the energy level that you get from the audience. <clears throat> Now, again, based on how long it is speech, could be a five minute speech, could be a 20 minutes, an hour, and so on. At the beginning, you should start with a very high level of energy, which means you should shock your audience at the beginning, get them at the edge of their seats. Do something that's never been done before. And you can even shock your audience before you eat, I mean, like you even take this, uh, I mean, before you even take the stage. I attended a, a, a Toastmaster club once, and there's this lady, and she's giving a speech about, because she likes how to draw. And she's giving a speech about the use of colors. And she chose a speech title. The speech title is 50 Shades of Grey. 50 Shades of Grey. Now, as soon as I heard that title, I said, OK, I have to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. But she was talking about 50 Shades of the, of, of the Color Grey. <laughs> <laughs> but she was able to hook the audience from the beginning. Then, <coughs> when you move on into the body of your speech, the energy kind of dropped down when you explain to the audience What's the speech about? What are you talking about? Then, every now and then, you should spike up the energy again. And you can do that by, if you're telling a story, tell something really interesting out of the story. You can tell it with a higher voice. You can use the humor, throw a joke in there. The energy level will drop back and forth. Then, toward the end of your speech, that's when you drop the, the level of energy so low because your audience is now very perceptive, and that's when you inject the message that you want. And usually, that's when you use your low voice. Very conviction. And then at the end, the last thing you say should be very strong. That last line in the speech of presentation that you give, that very last line should be the line that you invest the most on. Because your audience will remember always the last thing that you ever said. In the conclusion, leave us on a high note. What does that mean? Your speech could be about a very sad story that happens. But even though it's a very sad story, never leave your audience feeling depressed. Always leave them with the hope that, you know what, the world is still a better place. We can do something about it. 
Even though it was a very sad incident throughout, at the end, we could do something. And this is leave us to the next point, which is leave us with something to do. I can give you a speech now about world hunger. And at the end of the speech, I can say, ladies and gentlemen, I think all countries should unite and do something and end the world hunger. Now, all of you are thinking, all right, you're talking about all countries. What can I do? There's nothing for me to do. Always end your speech with, there is something in your hands that you can do, because that what the audience will take the most. Choice of words, rule of three, I'm sure all of you know the rule of three. A signature phrase. A signature phrase can add a very strength to your speech in terms of if there is one thing that you would like your audience to remember, always can ever just repeat that signature phrase throughout your speech. There's a, the 2014 world champion, he had a signature phrase that says, I see something in you, but I don't know what it is. And throughout his speech, he kind of repeated that signature phrase, I see something in you but I don't know what it is. And he ended with that signature phrase. I see something in which I don't know what it is. Bring life to your speech. What do you mean by bringing life to your speech? Picture this, ladies and gentlemen. What do you see? Beach. A beach and a lady walking on the beach. Now, I can describe this picture as follows. She was walking on the dark beach, sunset in the horizon, cold, chivalring water running throughout her feet looking at the darkness about to fill the sky. Would that describe the image that you just saw before? Mm -hmm. Good. Good, most likely. I can describe it like this as well. The soft sands were tingling in her feet and she walked across a beautiful beach of sunset, a soft breeze running through her hair. I can describe the same scene in two different ways. But what does the first phrase bring? What kind of emotion it brings? Negativity. Negativity and sadness. The second one brings life and positives. So when we say describe a speech, what do you want the emotion that to give to your audience? Do you want them to be happy? You use a phrase like that. Do you want them to be feeling a bit <coughs> sad and sorrow? You can describe the same scene with different words to kind of bring that emotion that you want your audience to feel. Body language. We're going to talk about two things, speech choreography and holograms. Speech choreography goes as follows. If this is your stage, and in your speech, you get a story. And in your story, you're going to talk about a place that happens at work, then an incident that happens, let's say, in a hospital. You're going to start at the middle of the stage, most likely. In the, in the introduction, you're going to move around the middle of the stage. And then, you're going to talk about the incident that happened at work, for example. Ladies and gentlemen, one day I went to my office. Now, in the subconscious mind of your audience, this is your office. If later on in your speech you're going to go back to your office again, you have to come back here. You cannot go back there. Because your audience somehow will be a bit confused. <coughs> then there's an incident that happened at home. She gave me a call, so I rushed to my house to check what's going on. So this is home now. Don't mix the two. <laughs> <laughs> And there's something called the hologram. And what do you mean by hologram? In your speech, sometimes you might have a character. I have a beautiful lady. So if your character at the beginning is here. For example, I walked across the mall and I saw a beautiful lady. And I said to her, hi, how are you doing? This is wrong. She's here. I'm talking like this way. So I created a hologram of a character here. And your audience will always think she's here. She's standing here. So I'm talking to her as if she was here. <clears throat> Voice. If there is a very important line in your speech that you want to stick in your audience's mind, say that line with a bit of a higher note. <clears throat> Act your speech. I was at the office one day, and she picked up the phone and she called me. And I said, hi. And she said, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. <laughs> she said, what are you doing for lunch? I said, I don't know, I'm free. And she said, can we go for lunch? Notice how I said, I said and she said, and I said and she said. And you all just don't feel that there was a scene. You can do it in a much better way like this. Hi. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. Would you like to go for lunch? Yeah, sure. 
So I'm like, I have two voices now and I've kind of created a little bit of a scene. So act your speech and don't tell your speech. Conviction, know who you're talking to. If you're talking to an older audience, if you're talking to an, like, an, uh, like an old audience, you can use a language that relates to them. If you're talking to an audience that's mostly males, you can use a language that fits for them. If my audience are mostly females, for example, I can just give a story about love and I can tell an incident where the two lovers are just leaving each other. They're at the train station. He's at that train. They're waving goodbye. Oh, the audience like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I told the same story to a bunch of men, they'll be like, mm. <laughs> so know who you're talking to. Speak always from the heart and speak with passion. A lot of people pick topics that they don't even know what they're talking about. And they just want to talk about it because they want to show themselves. Whenever you pick a topic to talk about, speak from here. Speak the, about something that means a lot to you. Because the audience will actually understand. Inspiration. Be unique and be a universal. What do we mean by that? Don't pick a topic that a lot of people have talking about before. And pick a topic that's very universal, which means I can take this speech and I give it to China, it will still make sense. You can give it in Africa, and it will still make sense. And, I, and like as we said, give some, uh, the audience something to, uh, what time do I have? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so now we have a cake. <laughs> <laughs> now, to make that cake a bit better, first of all, write your speech. And if there's one thing that you can take from this class or this, or, or like my speech today is this. Write your speech. A lot of people, they say, you know what, I'm gonna put points, and I don't go on stage and just wing it. You know, in Toastmasters, they always teach us not to do this when we're talking on stage. Why? Why is this not encouraged? Even though a lot of people, when they're like nervous, they like to stick their hands in their pockets. But what does this tell you when I'm speaking to you like this? <laughs> No, but like, I, I mean, like, I know what to do, but I'm talking to you like this. What does this tell you? Nonchalance. What is that? Nonchalance. Nonchalance. I'm not respecting you. And when you come on stage not preparing anything, not writing <coughs> anything, that's the biggest disrespect you can do to your audience. Write it down. You don't have to say it how it's written, but you have to write it down. Write it down, read it, throw it in the garbage. I don't care, but write it down. Rehearse. And first, rehearse to a friend. I would recommend that you do it to a non toastmaster friend. And ask that friend three questions. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Is it interesting? And did it move you to do something about it? <coughs> is the message really so inspiring mm -hmm. that, you would, that you are willing to do anything about it? And if the answer is no to any of these three, go back and do something about your speech. Then you can rehearse it in front of your toastmaster club. Ask for help. Each one of you has a talent, and yet each one of you also has a weak point. And I know a lot of you know what is my talent, and you should also know what is your weak point. And for those weak points, ask for help. For example, I'm good with humor. Jokes come to me easy, but words, I'm a crappy writer. I cannot write. So every speech I write, I give it to my friends who are really good with English and say, have a look at it. Is there something that could be changed? And it's not a shame to ask for help. Always start and end your speech with a smile. Even if the topic is a bit tragic, always start and end with a smile. A lot of speakers, they start the speech like this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no. Start and end with a smile to invite the audience. And remember, at the end, the speech is not about you. The speech is about them. And a lot of speakers, when they take the stage, the first concern is, how am I looking? Am I shaped? Do I sound correct? And they speak of, and they use all the steps and all the techniques and whatever in their mind. Look at me. <coughs> and at the end, they don't care. Did my audience take something home or not? When I was writing my speech, I went with, there is a, a phrase, a line that I wrote, and I thought to myself, this is the best thing I've written in my life. As soon as I wrote, oh my God, this whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but then when I was rehearsing it, a lot of the audiences gave me the same feedback. We don't get it. It's too harsh. <laughs> it's not related to the topic. 
And in my mind, I could have think, you know what? I don't care what you think. This is the best thing I've written. <laughs> but no, it's not about me. It's about them. And if my audience do not want that, I took it out of my speech. And now we have a deal book. <laughs> and now the cherry on top. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, why are we here? Why are we in Toastmasters? And why do we want to learn how to speak? Is it because you want to be famous one day? Is it because you want to make a lot of money? <laughs> sure. I want to be a good speaker. I want to make a lot of money. And a lot of people who care just about that, they never make it. Ladies and gentlemen, your sole purpose should be this. When you speak, and you're really good at it. You have the power to change someone's life. And every time you take the stage, take it with that in mind. I want to change someone's life. I always get uh, the same advice to anybody who comes to me for the last advice. Give me the last advice before I take the stage. And I always say this. Imagine this and believe in it. Imagine and believe that right after you've done with your speech and you step outside, you're going to die. And this is the last thing that you'll ever say. Is it worth saying? And if it is, how do you say it? Thank you for listening. <laughs>